Hey everybody, this is our video solution to problem two from Super Quiz 3. And in this video, we continue our discussion of the Gaussian integers. So in this video, we want to show that certain Gaussian integers are prime or are not prime, right? We want to give a prime factorization. Now, of course, we'll have to prove that when we do a factorization that what we get are actually primes, but uh, let's jump into this. So the, the key that we, you know, we'll, we'll use to unlock uh, everything here is this norm map. So recall that the norm of a Gaussian integer, a plus bi, is a squared plus b squared. And there are some very useful properties of the norm map that we're going to employ. So for example, if you have the norm of a product, then this will be the product of the norms. Uh, also, we know that if the norm of some Gaussian integer is equal to 1, then that Gaussian integer is a unit. <coughs> so, of course, for the Gaussian integers, right, unit is going to mean plus minus 1 or plus minus i. So that's going to be very helpful. Uh, okay, we also know that in the Gaussian integers, uh, being an indecomposable element and being a prime element are, are the same. So what we can uh, do if we want to prove that something is prime is we can show it's indecomposable. So let's recall what that means. So uh, some Gaussian integer, uh, let's call it uh, A, uh, not A, how about uh, alpha? Alpha in ZI is prime or indecomposable if whenever alpha is equal to a product of Gaussian integers. Right? So each, uh, each of these is an element of ZI. Then W or Z is a unit. Okay, so this should remind you of the definition of prime for integers, where you say, oh, it's uh, prime if the only, if whenever you can write it as a product, one of the factors has to be one, or of course, if we allow negatives, minus one. Okay, so we're going to use these properties here uh, to ex explore these two Gaussian integers, and actually what it's going to turn out is that this uh, two minus five i is prime, and that 13 is not prime. Okay, well that shouldn't be necessarily obvious, uh, but let's let's see how this is going to work. So let's take 13 first. Now 13 is equal to 4 plus 9. Now I didn't just randomly write down two numbers that add up to 13. Uh, instead, I'm writing down two perfect squares that add up to 13. And why is that relevant? Well, because the sum of squares, that means you're a norm of something. So, for example, 13 here might be the norm of 2 plus 3i. Okay, for example, could be negative 2 plus 3i, or 2 minus 3i, or negative 2 minus 3i. Any one of them will work. Okay, but another way that uh, we can get the norm is we can get it by taking the a plus bi, and multiplying it by its complex conjugate, a minus bi. And so what that tells us is that 13 is going to equal 2 plus 3i times 2 minus 3i. And neither of these is a unit. So we have a factorization of 13 as a product of Gaussian integers. Now, it might be possible that we could factor these even further. I claim, though, we can't. Right? I claim that each of these is prime. So how do we see that? Well, again, we use the norm. We know that the norm of 2 plus 3i, and of course, minus 3i as well, is 13. And 13 is, in the integers, a prime number, which means the only way to factor the norm, right, to factor 13, is 13 times 1. If we're dealing with positive integers, which, okay, if we're trying to factor this, that it, it, the norm is definitely not going to be 0, so it's definitely going to be a positive integer. All right, so now we head over here, though. If I had, all right, so if 
2 plus 3i was equal to a product. Okay, so that's what we need. If we want to show something as a prime, we assume it's equal to a product. Then we know that 13 is equal to the norm of 2 plus 3i is equal to the norm of wz is equal to the norm of w times the norm of z. So here we're using this theorem on the norm, as Dedekind called it. Okay, but 13 is an integer, n of w, n of z, these are all integers. And the only way to factor 13 as a product of integers, because 13, right, is prime in z, we know that this implies that n of w or n of z equals 1. But we set up above. If the norm of a Gaussian integer is 1, then that's a unit. So this implies w or z is a unit. Okay, so this confirms that 2 plus 3i is prime, and, and of course similarly 2 minus 3i is prime. Right? Or I guess I never said that, so this implies 2 plus 3i is prime in zi. Okay, and similar here in zi. Okay, so this is how we know 13 is not prime in the Gaussian integers because we have a prime factorization, right? And we actually know the prime factors. Now, how about 2 minus 5i? Well, if I take the norm of 2 minus 5i, I get 29, 2 squared plus 5 squared. But 29 is prime in the integers. And so we have the exact same argument as we had for n of 2 plus 3i, right? We knew it was equal to 13. You can't factor 13 in the integers because it's a prime, and therefore 2 plus 3i is prime. Okay, so the same argument shows... 2 minus 5i is prime in zi. Okay, uh, from here we can actually extrapolate a nice result. Okay, so theorem if z is a Gaussian integer and the norm of z is prime in the integers then z is prime in the Gaussian integers. Okay, so that's pretty, pretty helpful result here, right? If we use that right from the start, we could write down things very quickly. Okay, we'll see you next time when we move on to polynomials.